in the beginning of when you're starting a business, you're going to lack a lot of proof, which is like testimonials, pictures of your work, basically things that are going to show like, hey, I actually know what I'm doing, right? Because when a homeowner is looking to hire you, they're basically just hoping, okay, can you actually do a good job? And are you actually going to do the things that you're saying you're going to do, right? And so in the beginning, the best things that you could be doing are gathering what I call proof assets. And so that would be like pictures, right? Like just snapping quick pictures of your work and really showing like, what did we actually do? Before and after pictures are the best thing that you can show because you're demonstrating like, here's what it looks like before and here's what it looks like now. So if someone actually has a level of comparison, right? Because when you just show an after picture, then people have nothing to compare it to. So it is important to be able to show like, hey, here's what it looks like before, crappy, ugly lawn or whatever, backyard. And then here's what it looks like now. What's up, guys? It's Keith Kelfis with the Untrapped Podcast. We have an awesome show for you today. We've got Matt Tebow from Canada. He is the owner and founder of Savant Marketing Agency, and his book just came out, Digital Marketing Secrets for Contractors. I found this dude on Facebook over the winter. I'm just vegging out, scrolling on Facebook. All of a sudden, I see this dude on a whiteboard just dropping gold nuggets, and I stop watch like two, three, four videos. I'm like taking notes and shit. I'm like, this dude actually knows what he's talking about. And he's dropping knowledge bombs of all the stuff that contractors, like once he says it, you're like, oh my God, yeah, I should be doing that. Why am I not doing that? He just actually knows what the hell he's talking about. So real quick, this show is brought to you by Jobber. If you need a software to use to run your business on, I'm out of breath. Because I I just got back from a landscape job site and I was doing push-ups before the show. (laughs) If you need a software to run your business on, I've been using Jobber for like four years in my business. It does billing and invoicing and collects customer signatures and does change orders. You can collect payments on online automatically. You can dispatch crews. You can run your whole business off Jobber. Go to getjobber.com slash Kelfis to get a free two-week trial. And if you decide to sign up with my link, you get my exclusive discount. Check out Jobber. More of the Untrapped Podcast, right after this. Hey, if you're looking for what is probably the greatest software ever to run your business on, go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. You can create proposals, invoices, collect payments, even track your entire business directly on the Jobber smartphone app. And if you want to get a totally free trial of Jobber right now, Open your browser, type in getjobber.com forward slash Keith, and if after the trial you decide you want to sign up with Keith's link, you'll automatically get 20% off your first six months. So what are you waiting for? Go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. The Untrapped Podcast continues. So without any further ado, bro. I got your book immediately. I've read about, what page am I? It's got 131 pages. I'm on page 57 right now. Okay. Nice. I'm really reading it, bro. What's up, bro? I'm doing great. Nice to uh, be on the show. Thanks for having me. And that's pretty awesome that you've got a physical copy, actually. So that's great. Yes, I do. So, bro, some low-hanging fruit knowledge bombs. Before we went live on the show, you immediately, I'm like, you just started going right into it and talking about all the stuff. Let's just get right into it, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, tell us who you are and where you're from and why you do what you do so people you know and they know how to find you too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So my name is Matt Tebow, obviously. I have a marketing agency. It's called Savant Marketing Agency. Basically, we help contractors systemize their marketing and sales process. And so we're based in Ottawa, Ontario. And we work with contractors all over North America, though. How did you get into this? Bit of a long story, I guess. I was in university studying marketing. And then my dad actually had a friend that he mountain biked with, who was a marketing consultant. And I never met anyone before that was kind of like wealthy or super successful. And I went on mountain biking with him. And then I just kind of asked him, I said, what do you do, man? And he's like, oh, I'm a marketing consultant. I do marketing for industrial industries and helping out clients and stuff. And so I just said like, hey, can I work? 
for you. I would love to work with you and help you out, you know, and I worked with him for free, actually, for a year. And, and after that, I worked in a construction business a little bit for maybe six months just to pay off my student debt. But kind of what I learned from him, like the experience into the construction industry from there, and then my nine to five that I briefly had was construction. And then my grandfather was a contractor as well. So I've always been interested in marketing, but I kind of just fell into the contracting niche. And so I just kind of ran with it from there. Now, have you ever actually done contracting, landscaping, painting, construction, or any of that? I've done it like around the house and like for little side things here and there. I had like a little business where I would like do bike mechanics. I've always been like mechanically inclined, but I've never had my own contracting business. So the amazing thing to me is when I listen to your content and I dial in, you're talking like you sound like you're straight up own a landscape or construction company <laughs> and you've been through all of it. And that's why I'm fascinated. Yeah. I wanted to get you on the show. How do you understand all of the subtle nuances of what contractors actually go through? Like when you talk about it and you're diagnosing it and you're about to be telling us a bunch of cool yeah. tips right here, but how, do, how have you made those distinctions? That's an interesting question. Well, I think I've taken the time basically to listen to a lot of contractors' problems, right? The things that they've been going through. Like I do hundreds of phone calls with them. The other aspect as well is just like, it's been something I've been exposed to a lot. So like I said, like, my grandfather, things like that. So it's something that I've been exposed to a lot. It's just I've never been the person who's actually owning it, to be honest. So I understand what they're going through. I enjoy the marketing aspect. Bro, love it. All right. Now, I was saying you started getting right into it, talking about getting in the habit of taking pictures and all that stuff. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Some of the things that contractors can do, identifying low-hanging fruit that you can do to give your business more visibility, increase your marketing, low-cost, no-cost marketing things to start with. Like when I say low hanging fruit, I mean like that. How can people get a lot more leads flowing and their phone ringing a lot more and position themselves as a credible business that stands out against their competition? Even if you are just a little tiny business, how can you really do that? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is like you were saying, you know, a lot of the people listening are so busy that it's kind of like, okay, like what do I actually do? If I had to do one thing, you know, like what would it be? Because I don't have a lot of time. And so if you're going to be going out and doing jobs, right? then you might as well start building a portfolio, right? Like you might as well start capturing those jobs that you're actually doing. And so if you're always busy, if you're always doing these things, you might as well just take a moment, snap a before and after picture, that kind of thing. Because what I call that is building out what's called proof assets. So basically in the beginning of when you're starting a business, you're going to lack a lot of proof, which is like testimonials, pictures of your work, Basically, things that are going to show like, hey, I actually know what I'm doing, right? Because when a homeowner is looking to hire you, they're basically just hoping, okay, can you actually do a good job? And are you actually going to do the things that you're saying you're going to do, right? And so in the beginning, the best things that you could be doing are gathering what I call proof assets. And so that would be like pictures, right? Like just snapping quick pictures of your work and really showing like, what did we actually do? Before and after pictures are the best thing that you can show because you're demonstrating like, here's what it looks like before and here's what it looks like now. So if someone actually has a level of comparison, right? Because when you just show an after picture, then people have nothing to compare it to. So it is important to be able to show like, hey, here's what it looks like before, crappy, ugly lawn or whatever, backyard. And then here's what it looks like now. You're going to see this a lot in like the weight loss industry, right? Like where they showcase like, hey, I was obese on this side, and then they show the guy with the abs or whatever on the right. And so it's the same exact thing. You want to show those transformations. That's why the pictures in the beginning are super easy to implement, but very good as well. Ah, now how do you create like a before after? Do you like a collage app on your phone or something that so they're you, right next? You could, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, like if there's like Canva or something like that. I mean, the software itself as important, like I'm sure there's a million apps that can do it. But the important thing is that you kind of, yeah, you want to showcase that kind of transformation. And ideally, this is kind of funny, like you want to make sure that the after picture actually looks better, right? Like sometimes clients will send us before and after pictures, but the after picture is like darker and on like a rainy day or like something that's like not as nice as the before picture. And it's like, well, this kind of just defeats the purpose of like what we're trying to do here. I was reading that in your book. <laughs> make sure that the after picture is nice and high quality. Make the, the before picture all nasty and black and white with low pixelated. <laughs> it just looks like crap. So it's like a yeah, day. it's like 
you can do it up to the level that you want to, but it's, we just want to make sure that the after picture actually looks better, right? Some clients will send us an after picture and we're like, dude, the before looks better. <laughs> so getting in the habit, it's like, how do you get into the habit? Would you got any tips? I think that in the beginning, especially, you're just going all over the place. You're kind of in survival mode, right? You don't have any systems or anything in your business that's kind of like, this is how we run things around here. And so the more that you can get into the stage of kind of like, all right, this is our protocol of how a job goes. So we do step one, step two, step three. What I like to tell our clients is like, get into the habit of some kind of system or protocol of how you go about doing a job or onboarding a client. So then you literally can have like a checklist and be like, cool. The first thing is the client fills out this form or they do this thing. The second thing is we take the picture. So you can actually make it so you have a checklist of things. Then it's like kind of built into how you do things. That'd be one way of doing it. Bro, um, protocol where it's built right into every job, taking the picture. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, oh man, I forgot to take the before and after picture. Dang, we just did this $10,000 job and forgot to do it. It's just built in. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So then it's, you want the delivery of your service to be the same every time, right? So then that's an easy way to get into the habit of that. Or if you have a team and maybe it's harder for you to do that, maybe you could create like incentives for them to grab good before and afters. No, that's another idea. Ah, uh, okay. More, more low hanging fruit. That shit was good. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So we talked about the pictures. So that's like a really simple one you could do that I think would help a lot of people listening. The second one, honestly, is just getting into the habit of getting reviews as well. So that's another one of the proof assets that I talk about in the book. Reviews are really good, especially on Google, because it's going to attract more clients to you because it's going to rank your listing higher. But it's also going to let you say stuff in the sales process of saying, hey, we've only been in business for one or two years, but we have 55 star reviews. We're one of like the highest rated landscaping companies in your area or something like that. These are kind of things that you can start pointing to and leveraging and then showing around, maybe taking screenshots of it and showing on your social media. Hey, we just got another great review from a client. These are things that are going to make people have more confidence in working with you, which is another like low hanging fruit thing. So you take screenshots of the positive review and you post it. Yeah, because you don't want to just show it on Google. You could show it on Facebook or on Instagram. Just say a good thing that you can resort to. If you don't want to, some clients will sound like, well, I don't want to be bragging all the time or like showing this kind of stuff. You always just default to gratitude. So you can just say, well, hey, we're just showing this right now because we're so grateful of the clients that we get to work with and serve. And you can show what we're doing. So that's a way to kind of take it from Google to social media and, and be showing these things. So then people are like, wow, they must do a really good job. Default to gratitude. Here on page 37, you said, ask your clients for a testimonial only when they're happy and excited. Why did you say that? That's true. Yeah. So this is something that I learned a while ago. (laughs) That's funny. So have you ever experienced where you buy something new? Maybe you get a new car or whatever. And the day you get it, you're like super excited about it. You're all, man, like this is amazing, blah, blah, blah. But then a couple months goes by or whatever, and then the excitement of it kind of slows down. Maybe you notice a ding in it or a scratch here and there. Oh, like, I don't really like that aspect of it actually as much. And so your kind of energy goes down a little bit, right? So it's really important that you catch things at the right time. Because let's say that someone is telling you, you do your landscaping services, and they see it for the first time or whatever, and they come on, they're like, wow, you guys are amazing. You did everything perfectly. Man, you guys are just awesome. I'm so impressed, blah, blah, blah. If you wait like a week later and then you say, hey, could you give us a review? Then you're risking that maybe he gets in a fight with his wife when you send that email or maybe something happened in his family that's just bad or maybe he got fired from his job or whatever. Obviously, now your review isn't going to be top priority or maybe you're risking that his emotional state isn't going to be in the right state to catch him. So when he's in that moment or she, and they're saying like, wow, you're so amazing, blah, blah, blah. You want to catch it right there. And you can say, Hey, I'm really excited that you're enjoying this a lot. Could you just give us like a couple statements of your experience working with us? Or, Hey, here's a link. Could you just do it right now? You know, and leave us a review. You want to catch them in that peak state of excitement because that's a window of time that's limited, right? Yeah. It's like they could go from, Oh my God, it's amazing. And to, is all right. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. You get you asked for the release one, three months later when weeds are growing up through the shit. <laughs> exactly. So you don't want to miss out on that window of time, you know? Man, you got so much good stuff in here and the book is so organized. Hey, is your guard up a little bit? Because you don't even know me. I just start following you on social media. I'm like, <laughs> bro, you got to be on my podcast. Do you think I got some up my sleeve or something? No, not at all, man. I actually really appreciate it because I've noticed that you've been commenting on my stuff and being supportive. So that's super nice, you know? So I actually really appreciate it. That's because you actually drop knowledge bombs, bro. Give us some more gold nuggets. More of the Untrapped Podcast right after this. Looking to maximize your production in the field? Ballard Products has over 300 products that can help you get the most out of your efforts every day. Ballard Products. Whether you are looking to get a better cut, keep your gear on your machine, keep your expensive equipment clean and safe, or just get the most out of your machines, Ballard has you covered. Ballard Products. Jump onto our easy-to-use updated website at ballard-inc.com to get your gear ordered today. Keep grinding, Keep grinding stay, stay safe, safe, and have a great season. Ballard. Make sure to use the code KEITH10 to save 10% on our full line of gear. That's KEITH10. The Untrapped Podcast continues. Yeah, sure. So we talked about the pictures, right? So that's something easily you could do. The reviews are a really big one. I suggest just focusing only on Google because that's going to be the highest return for you. The next golden nugget that you can implement is a lot of contractors who are newer businesses, they'll do some kind of price-related offer to try and get attention, right? So they'll say, hey, for this month, we're offering 15% off our services. Or if you book before this time, we'll give you this percentage off, right? That's definitely the wrong approach that you want to do because... You're going to attract the wrong type of person. You're going to attract people who are just looking for a price related thing. Like they're going to just be focusing only on the price and shopping only on price. And so a golden nugget that you can start implementing that I guarantee you not a lot of landscapers are doing is you can start looking for ways to get people's attention by adding value into your service with something free that you throw in instead of discounting something. So for example, instead of saying 10% off, You could literally just say, hey, we'll throw in a free $100 gift card for this service here, whatever, when you buy XYZ. And a lot of the times, the $100 gift card will actually have a higher buyer perception of like value than the 10% off simply because you're actually giving them something instead of just this percentage off, especially if it's somewhere that is valuable to them, it will have a higher value perception in their mind. Another thing too you could do is this might be a little bit tougher with lawn care services, but you could do like a warranty, right? So you could say, hey, we guarantee we're implementing like a five-year warranty with your patio. Or maybe if you're doing lawn treatments, you could say, hey, we're going to throw in this grub control spray for free with your lawn treatment or something like that. So adding value instead of discounting is a really cool trick that you don't have to really change much about your business, but will get a lot of attention and usually the right types of attention. So that's another trick that I think is low hanging fruit because you don't have to do anything. You're just kind of changing your messaging, right? Uh, On page 26 and 27, you talk about how the price shopper is attracted to a price or a lower price while the value hunter is willing to pay more for better value. So you're using those messaging signals to attract that right type of customer. Real quick, because I keep referring to the book, do you have this on audiobook or Kindle or is it just paperback and where can people find it? Yeah, I do have it on audio. If you go on Amazon, you can buy the paperback there. And then the Audible is also on Amazon. But for your listeners as well, like I was mentioning before this, I have the ebook and I have an MP3 download that I can give away for free on this podcast. So they can have that if they go to contractormarketingbook.com then they can get free access to it. So they get the ebook and the audio book is in there. Well, actually, I'm going to finish the whole book on paper and then listen to it again. Yeah, because I'm a listener. I'm a listener as well. So Contractormarketingbook.com. Yeah. It's awesome, man. There's so much good stuff in here, bro. I've got a lot of books, bro. I've read a lot of books. I know. It's literally, yeah. It just gets straight to the point, bro. It's like, (laughs) you just get right to the good stuff. See, I've written a few books myself. My one book called How to Make $500 a Day Cleaning Windows. It's tons of facts. I mean, I put my heart and soul in this. 
But like the first whole chapter, I talk about the struggle, like the hero's journey and what I yeah. went through and like my wife and I in a one bedroom apartment with an eviction notice and how I had to get my shit together. And then I recorded it in the studio. And then upon listening to my own book on audible.com, I was like, man, people don't want to sit through this first chapter of garbage of me talking about. They want the juice. So it's like. You actually feel the opposite way because I'm like, yeah. man, I just kind of like get right into it. So maybe I should put more stuff in there. I don't know. But I just kind of go right into it. I think it's great, man. So out of all of the. Oh, yeah. This is what I want to ask you about. Google ads and mm -hmm. pay per click and now investing and spending money on advertising. Mm -hmm. Tell a little bit about that and how should people lean into that? That's a really good question. So right off the bat, I'll tell you, Google ads is going to be more expensive and more competitive just because it's been around longer. There's a lot more competition on there. So any kind of advertising on Google ads is going to be more expensive and competitive than, let's say, Facebook ads, for example. But the thing is, is that Google ads is going to be a more qualified lead that you get from there. That's why it's more competitive because people really want to be on there, right? Because when someone is typing in best landscaper near me, that's a pretty high intent search. The person is looking for a solution to their problem. And so Google ads is going to be a very qualified lead, but they're going to be more expensive. And so just keep that in mind. Like if you're in your first couple of years, Google ads might be something that might be a little bit further down the line for you. So then that means that Facebook ads would be a really good option to start with because now you're getting these before and after pictures like we talked about. Maybe you come up with that offer like I also mentioned where you throw in something free. So you could put together a pretty simple Facebook ad and do it for like you no know, five, 10 bucks a day. More obviously is better because then you're gonna have more exposure. But if that's all that you can do, then that would be a really good way to start getting into advertising from there. So Facebook is definitely, you're going to have less quality leads that come through there, but you're going to be able to get into the advertising game like less expensively and be able to start generating your own leads and not just rely on referrals for sure. Mm. So I have taken 11 Facebook ads courses mm -hmm. and got certified in some stuff for Facebook ads. And I also, since 2016, I've been doing Facebook ads and then Google pay-per-click and now YouTube ads and running a full-time landscaping business with employees and having a media business, I kept repeatedly coming up short on time. And when I did run Facebook ads, they weren't optimized. So I finally broke down and I have two different ads people who I hire mm -hmm. and I have a Google ad specialist and then I have a Facebook ad specialist yeah. and then I pay them their fee and then we run ads and then I can just come in and tweak and tune and optimize the campaigns or turn things off and they help me with that. Mm -hmm. It's like, so for somebody who's constantly stuck working, how can they simplify or get into the Google ads or should they hire somebody? What do you think is the best route? My answer would be different for the different platforms. So I would say that Facebook it's going to require much less experience because you can experiment on there with a picture or whatever, run it for like two weeks and then boost another one. With Facebook ads, what you could do is just do posts on your actual business page. And then if you see, okay, that post actually got like a decent amount of engagement organically, that means like not paying for ads compared to the other post, then maybe that's a sign that, okay, this ad actually is pretty decent. Maybe I'll boost that one, right? So you could boost that for a week. And that's like fairly simple for any beginner to do. There's two aspects to a Facebook ads. There's the back end one, and then there's the front end one where you just boost. And so just doing the boosting feature, most people could figure that out. So I would say that that one would probably be the easier option for someone to get into. Whereas Google ads, to be honest with you, I would recommend unless you have the hours on a weekly basis to invest into really learning that, just hire someone to do it because Google ads, there's a lot more going on there. You need to understand what you're doing. You could waste a lot of money on Google ads if you don't know what you're doing, just paying for like stupid clicks, right? So that, that's what I would recommend for someone who wants to do it themselves. Yeah, I got a friend spending like 48 grand a month right now on Google ads. And his ads guy is kind of like the guardian of the black box because this guy is so busy running his multiple businesses that he doesn't know anything about ads and he's just trusting the people that are running right. it. Right. I'm not saying that I'm an expert. I can go remediate that or fix that. He might be doing great. These guys running a multi-million dollar agency. But another thing I was thinking about 
to simplify down, I like Facebook ads. I can like close $199 gutter cleaning jobs on Facebook, local geographic area for 53 bucks per closed job. And then once I get in there, I can upsell them on landscape maintenance, cleaning out the downspouts, do five round, which is putting door hangers on all the neighbors. And then my truck is outside. I could put a bandit sign in the lawn. And now I got their email. I could do email marketing and then Mm -hmm. call them back in the spring and turn them into a regular client. My customer acquisition cost per client is 53 bucks. So on Facebook. Very, very cheap. See, you just said very, very cheap. For a closed client who now the customer lifetime value LTV of that could be, I don't know, $6,500. And you say, oh my God, I got you way back in 2020 for 53 bucks. And now you've spent (laughs) $6,500 with my landscape business and referred me to your neighbors who also spent 3,500, 25. And then you look at my God, that 53 bucks got me 25 grand. So more of the untrapped podcast right after this. Jill's office provides friendly, professional receptionists for small business owners just like you. We can help answer your calls, and we can even schedule estimates and jobs for you. Try Jill's office today and get a $25 discount when you say Untrapped. Just go to jillsoffice.com. The Untrapped Podcast continues. Yeah, that's another, like, we were talking about low-hanging fruits. It's like, I'll tell my clients like, hey, if you want to start making more money per lead that you land per job, then just start putting out door hangers to like five houses to the left, five houses to the right, maximize the job that you've got, right? The referrals you get from that. So that sounds like that's what you're doing. That's really cool. Yeah, dog. Okay, one final tip. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Tell us the secrets. Anything specific? I don't know, man. Everything you've been saying makes perfect sense. So you pick. Yeah, man. I would say that just like what I see a lot of is people going way too wide with their services way too soon. If you're a newer landscaping business, then stick to like one or two things that you can really rock and you're like the go-to guy for that and you create all the systems for that. You have all the pictures for that, the reviews for that, the referrals for that. You're going to have some massive growth. Then instead, I see some guys who are new in the game. And they're like, yeah, we do this, 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 and all these things. And they have like a flyer with like 20 different things they offer. Dude, you're going to get overwhelmed. You're not going to get that great systems in any of this. And your marketing is going to be hard. And so I would say niche down and then really, really scale that and become the go-to guy for that and then start going wider. That was something I would say. Bro, that's so good. You just reminded me, I have a friend named Joshua Latimer, and he was part of, man, I need to stop saying his damn name so much in all my videos and podcasts. <laughs> he was part of this high level mastermind group. And he told a story once of how he had everybody stand up. Now sit down. If you make under a hundred grand a year, a bunch of people sat down, 250, more people sat down, 500,000, a million. Most of the people in the room sat down and there's only five people left standing, 2 million, 5 million. There was only three people left standing, 10 million, two people left standing. Wow. 15 million, one guy standing, 20 million, still standing. So he's the only guy standing left in this private mass my group of like 40 people. And then it was just like, kind of like a nerdy dude with glasses. He's like, we do over 20 million a year. And what? What do you do? He's like, gutter cleaning. <laughs> and then they're all looking around the room. He goes, and what else do you do? He's like, that's it. Just gutter cleaning. Wow. And they're like, how is this possible? And he's like, well, we're like the number one gutter cleaning company in the whole state of New Jersey. And we've scaled that to be the best. And their systems are so refined that that's what they do. And it's like that kind of blew my mind to attest to what you're saying. When I first started my landscape business, I had so many different services because I was starving for money. And then by the second or the third spring, bro, I had to do a whole binge and throw. I pulled up to a dumpster. I had my pickup truck filled to the top with broken shit, stuff for painting, stuff like like every type of random service. (sighs) But I felt like I had to do that in the beginning to make money. So maybe I I love what you're saying about niching down. And because when you start hiring employees, if every day of the week, they're doing a different service and learning how to use different tools, your business is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. And you got to do what you got to do to get by, right? So if you have to take on the weird jobs here and there to get by and pay the bills, then sure. But I would just say like the outward face of your business, especially for marketing, should have some niche to it. And you should be striving to niche operationally. But I mean, if every now and then you have to do something, okay, cool. But just don't be like making that your focus. 
Yeah. And and marketing and promoting this one company, my local area, the back of their trailer, it lists like, I think I counted it was like 18 (laughs) different services. And in the beginning, I was like, whoa, they must be killing it. And then five years later, I was like, man, the owners must be stressed out. Yeah. But they seem to do well, well, but that stressed me out. So man, Matt Tebow, T-H-I-B-E-A-U. Yeah. Your name everywhere on Facebook, Instagram, everyone can find you. Facebook is my platform. So if you want to follow me, follow me on Facebook, Matt Tebow, and then you can follow my content. And we have a group. It's also called Renovation Contractor Success that I do the videos you were talking about there where I do my whiteboard videos. And we do a couple of those a week. So that's where you can follow me. I also have a YouTube channel. It's not as popping as yours. I just started it. I think I've got 50 subscribers. (laughs) So Facebook is my primary. Love it. Matt Tebow, T-H-I-B-E-A-U on Facebook and Renovation contractor success, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Go on there and you'll see these amazing whiteboard videos where he's just dropping knowledge bombs and golden nuggets and you can (laughs) implement that stuff in your business. What is the website again where people can find the book? Yeah. So if they go to www.contractormarketingbook.com. Contractormarketingbook.com. We'll also make sure we put that in the show notes. Dog. And then you have an, an agency, Savant Marketing Agency. What do you do? Who do you do it for? Yeah. So we help residential contractors. So landscapers, painters, pretty much any residential contracting business set up and manage all of their lead generation for them. So Facebook ads, Google ads, a little bit of local SEO. And we also help them with their sales process too. So you were talking about Jobber. That's one that we do recommend to a lot of our clients just for managing like the leads that are coming in, making sure that they have some kind of CRM system set up just because There's no point in us sending you a bunch of leads if you can't keep track of them and know what to say to them and stuff like that as well. We help them a little bit on that end as well. Ah, so you help people get a whole bunch of leads and then manage a systematize the way they, yeah, like a selling process. Yeah, exactly. Dude, so awesome. Okay, say the book one more time. Yeah, it's Uh, contractormarketingbook.com. It's digital marketing secrets for contractors on Amazon if you want to get the paperback, but you can get a free copy of the ebook and the audiobook if you go to contractormarketingbook.com. Here it is right there. Look, if you're watching this on the Untrapped Podcast YouTube channel, so you can see his name. If not, listen, rewind back, go back, type it in. You got to read this book. It's awesome. Thanks so much for being on my show, bro. Thanks for having me. It was great. Man, any final things you want to say? No, I'm good, man. I said everything I want to say on this. And yeah, I appreciate you guys listening. I love it. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,